Hello and welcome to a bite journey tutorial on how to configure your DZ server for your Mega Manager. So the first thing you want to do is go to your local host 8081 website and you want to shut down your server. After that you want to press overview, wait for it to load, then you want to press server configuration. So as you can see we have loads of convals here, we can enable and disable, change. So I'm going to go through them all with you. So the first thing we have here is your host name. This will be the name of a server people will see in the um, menus, so DAISY SA launcher menu. So you'll be typing ByTerny test server to join our server. So I'm going to leave it as ByTerny test server, feel free to change this to whatever you want. The next thing we have is slots. So that's how many people are allowed to join your server at one time. The next thing we have is game password, so if you want people to use a password to join your server, you feel free to put a password in here, however, most servers are public, so you don't really want a password. The in-game admin password is used to uh, run used to run uh, vanilla admin commands. I would suggest having this something strong, because you don't want users shut, random users shutting down your server, if you start your server, so definitely have this as a strong password. So the server time, this is what the time will default to on, start, on like server start. So let's say your server restarts, it will go, automatically go to this time. So you could set this as noon, it will be, it'll be day every time your server restarts. The next one we have is mission. This is basically the map we use in Daisy. So you could set this to one of the DLC maps. However, I'm going to be using Shinonis. So the next thing we have is time acceleration. So this is a ratio of real life minutes to in-game minutes. So if I wanted one minute in game to equal sixty minutes in, no, if I wanted one bit, sorry, if I wanted one minute in real life to equal sixty minutes in game, I could have that. Or I could have it as fifteen, or whatever I want really. So I'm going to leave that as sixty. So night acceleration. This is basically the same as above. However, it also stacks with above. So I would be careful when setting this. So time persistence. Basically, if you serve it. If your server shuts down at night, will it restart on, uh, like when it launches back up, will it be night still? If you want it to be night still, you would take it. However, this won't really work if you have a server startup time, if you understand me. So the next thing we have is third person perspective. So most of, in Daisy you get first person, first person servers and third person servers. So it's really up to you what you want, but I'm going to leave this third person. Crosshair that's, crosshair, that's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to leave that on. Uh, VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol, Voice Chat, I'm going to leave that on. So, save building state. So, basically, if a player opens a door on your server and the server restarts, do you want that door still to be open? It's a pretty self-explanatory thing, so I'm going to leave it on. Storage auto fix. Let's say you have a corrupt file in your DAISY file explorer. This will basically replace it as a blank file. I recommend doing that. So debug monitor, that's basically helpful. Let's say you're developing a server and you add loads of mods. You can monitor your FPS to see if it's going to be laggy for the client. For same game version, I would highly recommend you leave this on because you don't want people joining an outdated client that could lead to all sorts of trouble. So we're going to go up here next to it. Disable person light. So basically, Players used to have a blue outline up from at night. Um, this isn't really used anymore, so I would leave this as one. So all of these ones, it's either one or zero. One means on, zero means off. So enable whitelist. Most servers are public, so you don't really want a whitelist. What a whitelist is, is you would need to add someone's Steam ID to a text file for them to join. Guaranteed updates. This is a protocol used by the server. I would definitely leave this on. Lightning config, so basically what this means is zero means lighter nights and one means darker nights. So if you want a light night, I would leave this at zero. If you want a very dark night, I would put that at one. So log average FPS, that's basically when your server starts to get a white box in the corner showing you all the like console of it basically. Um, the, you will also notice in that console, like it reports your FPS. So this is how frequently it um, reports the FPS. So now we have log file. What this is, is basically the file it logs to. That's pretty self-explanatory. After that, we have logging queue concurrent players. So that means how many players can load into your server at the same time. I wouldn't put this too high as it can cause lag. However, 
five is five is all right, but you can, if you've got a strong server, I'd, I'll may, maybe put up to seven or ten. So login queue concurrent players is um so that's how sorry login queue max players that's how many people can just be in the queue at the same time. Multi-thread replication, basically I would leave that as default unless you know what you're doing with it. Verify signatures, that's basically to do with, that's that's to do with mods, I would leave that unless you know what you're doing. And wrong code quality, that's basically the, um, the quality of voice chat. I would personally leave that as 20, the max number is 30, however it's not really going to make a difference. So unless you have a strong server, I would just leave it at 20. It's, it's barely it's barely a difference. So now I'm going to show you how to add custom convars. So in the description, there's going to be a list of all the custom convars you can use. So for an example of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in this box. So in this box, I'm going to have respawn time. So that's how long it takes for your character to respawn. I've noticed if you have a, two, like a very, very low respawn time, it can cause issues with a client. So... I'm going to have my respawn time is 8. So all I would do is type in respawn time in this box. And the value I want that respawn time to be. So I would just want 8 like I said. So that is how you add a custom convert to the game. So now all you want to do is press save changes. And jobs are good. So now I'm going to show you how to configure Omega Instant. So here we have loads of um, loads of options. Um, it can be quite scary if you don't know what you're doing. However, I'm going to show you how to go through it. So when you, this auto start here, what that means is if you start Omega Manager, do you want the game server to start at the same time? I do, so I'm going to leave it on. Rotate instant logs. What that means, what I think it means anyway, is that um. Basically, if you've got like an old log, it will overwrite that log, so it doesn't waste storage, if you know what I mean. The log path is pretty self-explanatory. It's the path the logs are going to get rid to. So, pre-execution script, basically what that means, if, if you use something like Battle I and uh, Beck, um, what you can do is put that on, and um, you can use a file path to make Beck start at, start at the same time the game server starts. So keep logs, if you want to keep logs, um, yeah, so um, minus one if you want to keep all logs, or you can put a day in there, like the amount of days, so if I wanted to keep logs for seven days, I would just put seven in there, jobs are good. So backups, basically, um, this is a preference really, I'll, um, it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's, it's really your preference, I don't really need to go through this with you. So server, what we have here is a quite advanced stuff, so if, unless you know what you're really doing, I would keep this all as default. Your server will work perfectly fine if you leave this all as default. The same with process, really, I wouldn't really touch this unless you know what you're doing. Update, this is pretty interesting because um, what this does is if you add a Discord webhook, this will, uh, this will notify players or admins when there's a mod update. I would personally notify you of a place in my Discord um, if a server or mod update was out so we know if they need to restart their client and update for mod. Uh, CF tools, so you can hook this up with CF tools if you get your server ID and your API key. It um, This can add a lot more functionality to Omega Manager, so I would recommend doing this. And debug I would leave off unless you know what you're doing really. So that's the end of this tutorial and I hope this helped you.